So moving on to what we need to do in uh, our Reaper file for the song. Even though I'm not using keyboards or vocal harmonies on this song, I'm going to show you how you would um, potentially bring over the um, templatized keyboard and harmony tracks from a Reaper template into your existing songs. So you don't have to migrate all of your charting work that you've done into a new template just to take advantage of that. Um, I think most people are probably pretty familiar with how to move around between templates, but I wasn't for a long time. So hopefully this is um, helpful for somebody who's not sure how to do that. Um, we're essentially going to bring in the new text events for our venue track and for our, our events track. Uh, the third thing we're going to do is we're going to add practice sections to the events track, which is a, a new thing that um, essentially allows a player to go through your song section by section. And we basically get to um, select what the names of those sections are from a really massive list of available choices. And then those um, practice sections, the way we lay those out, are what drive the auto-generated uh, venue lighting and camera cues if you decide to take advantage of auto-generation. Um, and then in terms of updating the venue itself, there's more than one way to skin a cat, obviously. The way that's been working for me on some of my songs is rather than go into the venue track and try to update it um, right there, I'll actually add a new venue track so that I temporarily have two. And then what I'll do is I'll open them at the same time and I'll gradually convert what I see in my old venue track into text events in my new track. And then when I'm finished, I'll go ahead and delete the old venue track and be left with the new one. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so here's Happy People loaded up in Reaper. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do just for reference is I'm gonna bring in harmony and keyboard tracks, even though I'm not gonna use them on this song. Uh, if you have a, a legacy song that you're needing to convert over and you're realizing that now you might like to add those features, um, this will show you how to bring those in so that you don't have to migrate all of this work into a new RBN 2.0 template. So the first thing I'm going to do is just close the song. And then I'm going to open uh, my new uh, Rock Band Network 2.0 template. There are a number of templates floating around out there. I don't think Harmonix has posted one as of right now. Um, but a couple people on the Rock Band Network creators forum have started to post some nice ones. And I've essentially taken their work and modified it slightly to kind of suit my personal working style. Uh, so this is not my work. This is sort of my modified version of other people's work um, to start to lay this out. But um, the, the only thing that's really unique about this compared to where I started from is I've added effects tracks that I route the stems through so that I can do whatever limiting or audio adjustments I want to do uh, on those tracks instead of modifying the original stems. That also allows me, if I've got multiple guitar tracks or whatever, I can route them all through one spot and do all my audio adjustments on, on that effects track and then easily be able to turn that on and off if I need to. Um, so this is kind of a master mixing sort of template that I would load all my stems into, create my tempo map, save it as a mixing file and then save another separate copy as a charting file. And then I, I like to do my mixing and my charting in two separate places uh, for reasons that I'll go into probably in a separate video. But down here, if I scroll down a little bit, here we can see the vocal tracks. Um, I've got my separate MIDI tracks now for charting the individual harmony parts and, uh, and then tracks for my stems as well. And then in the keyboards area, um, the keys part is your, this is where you do your f standard five lane keyboard charting. And then when you uh, start charting for pro keys, you'd start here for expert and then start reducing for hard, medium, and easy. And then we'll usually carry the charting for expert down uh, onto the right hand and then you can add additional charting for the left hand to animate the uh, keyboard player avatar that you see on screen. And then here's where you'd put in the stem and then this is a, uh, uh, an effects track that I added so I could um, control the limiting on the keyboard stem. And I like to use this nested sort of collapsible functionality so when I'm not working on a certain part I can hide it and get it out of the way. So if I want to save this uh, nested set of vocal tracks and keyboard tracks as, a, um, as two templates that I can import into my existing song, I just right click on the top level track, I select save tracks as track template, and then I'll give it a name. I'll call it RBN 2.0 Vox Track Template. And then an important thing to remember is you actually have to click Include Track Items in Template, or you'll get empty tracks with no um, 
no MIDI templates uh, in the actual track area. So I'll save that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the keyboards track. And then I'll exit out of here and reopen my song file. So when you import track templates, they pop up below whatever track you have selected. So if I want to bring in the vocals, um, I want it to show up underneath this area so they're near each other. So I'll just select this bottom part of the, the vocals track area and say insert track from template. And over here it's automatically loaded up the two templates I just made. So I'll uh, insert the Vox template. And so now they're right next to each other so I could easily drag my my stems and my MIDI over to the new area and then delete the old one if I wanted to. So I'm not actually going to do that right now, so I'm just going to collapse this down and mute it. Muting a track uh, will prevent its MIDI file from getting included when you when you render out your MIDI to, um, to send it over to Magma. And then for the keyboards, I'll put those underneath where the guitar is, so I'll just pick this bottom guitar track, right click, insert track from template, and there's the keys track template. And now I've got my keyboards tracks with all the right um, MIDI templates uh, that uh, that I got off of the um, Creators Club forum. So the top level is your standard keys. This is the five lane version of the keyboard that um, is also playable on the uh, on the five button guitar. And then from there we've got our expert pro keys where you actually have your full two octave range that you can chart against. And then once that's charted, you start um, thinning it out for hard, medium, easy. We typically carry the charting from expert down onto the right hand. And then you can also add additional charting for the left hand to drive the, uh, the hands and fingers of the on-screen um, keyboard player avatar. So again, I'm going to hide that and mute it so that it's not factored in when I'm trying to build my song later. Uh, so that's what's up with keyboards and vocals. Next, we're going to take a look at updating the text events for um, the tracks file and the events file. I'm going to do events first because that's going to take a little bit less time. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open the events track. And as usual, there's not a whole lot going on in here. Um, but the first thing I'll do is I'll just grab that crowd real-time animation text event that I had in there originally, and I'm going to move that out to uh, the third beat because that's one of the errors that I was getting earlier in Magma is that this was right on uh, the beginning of the song, and it, it needs to be further out than, um, than the first two beats. The next thing I want to do is I want to add some practice sections to this song, um, number one, so that players will be able to have a good experience when they're um, trying to practice the different sections of the song. But two, if I were to want to use some venue auto-generation, which I'll sometimes do while I'm working on a song if I haven't had time to go in and do a proper venue work, but I want to be able to um, have the song look reasonably decent while I'm testing the charting. I also need to have practice sections in place for that. And the minimum that you need to have section-wise is you need to have an intro, an outro, a verse, a chorus, and a bridge. And then as long as you have at least one of each of those in place, then the auto generation will, um, will have enough to work with. So to take advantage of those practice sections, we basically need to import the new text events. And what I've actually started doing is um, breaking my text events up into different files for these different um, areas of the Reaper file, just because there's so many now. And you'll see this is an original. This was done with the uh, with the original template that I used to use, which has all the text events that all the different areas use. So a lot of this stuff you would never use on the events track and uh, the same is true with the other tracks so um, I've actually begun breaking them down and uh, what I'll do is make those files available uh, wherever you found this video so that if you'd like to grab those and import them into your own uh, file you'll be able to do that so the way that you swap out the the text events that are already there is you just click the load button and then this is gonna browse to uh, I'll try to show you the whole file path here um, under your C drive, um, users, you go into your user, and then you'll see um, a hidden folder called app data. 
roaming. Reaper data text strings. Um, that's where it's going to default to uh, to looking for text events. So this is where I've dropped in my text files that I've made. So this is the old master list of all the text events, and then these are the new um, subsets of, of text events that I've made. So for the events track, I'll just grab this one that I called events. And now the only text events that are on this list are ones that I would actually use in the events track. So stuff about controlling the crowd, and then basically everything after that it starts with PRC. These are all just names of practice sections that I could choose from. So uh, the first one that I'll pick is an intro. So I'll just look for PRC intro. And you can see if you had a long, complicated intro with lots of parts to it, you could actually start breaking it down and let people practice those sections uh, in smaller, in smaller um, chunks. So here's just a regular intro. So I'll add that, and then I'll, I'll just want to move it to wherever the, the song actually starts. Happy people. Happy people. So right about here. Okay, so far so good. So the next thing we want to put in is the first verse, which in this particular song starts almost right away. Happy It starts right there on the fourth bar. So um, pop up my list again. Scroll down to the verses. Again, this massive list uh, was pulled together by other members of the Rock Band Network authoring community. Um, and the, the those early templates have been passed around a few times, so I'm not exactly sure who to give credit for. Um, so I apologize, but I, I can tell you it wasn't me that that built this list. Uh, but I have, um, like I said, I've broken it down a little bit just to keep th this. This list is so big, I wanted it to only be available in the events track for my particular template that I use. So I'm going to just use PRC verse, and I notice that I actually have to fix my text file. This is actually missing its little square bracket, so I'll fix that by the time you're downloading that uh, that text file. PRC verse, and then I'll look for um, the beginning of the chorus. So right about here. Scroll down and look for. Uh, a basic chorus section. Same problem with the square bracket there. I'll fix that. Take your keys from a different book. This moment. 